Welcome to our class. Amazon.com is a very good example of a data-driven website. When I query a term and I'm using the all, however, I could have refined it. These are the different categories and they are all coming from the database and they would be used in this query. However, I just used all and I'm querying PHP and we see that the data is put into a template. We have a picture, we have something that says whether it's a bestseller or not, probably a flag somewhere saying to pull this data in, titles, authors, prices, a lot of things. And this is a very, very complicated high-end website. I don't pretend to understand how they do everything, but I am just showing you an example. And even on the left-hand side, based on what the query is, our other suggestions will change due to what is going on in the database. Now I am looking at another website, the San Diego Community College District schedule. And all of this information that we are about to see is all driven by the database using drop-down lists, free choices. So these are coming from the database and they're being used in the query. So if I were to select spring 2007, I can modify my query. Notice these are the different times classes are, the different locations, the colleges. Now some of these might be hard-coded, some not. However, they're all involved in the WHERE clause somehow in these queries. So the different subjects are all coming from the database and they are populating this drop-down list. Supposing I chose business and if I wanted to see all the courses, I can click list classes and it will show me the information. Here again, this is all coming out of a database into a template with the dates and the times, the location, the instructors, all of this information for business, all of the courses, any college in spring. Supposing I wanted to refine it, say to Mesa, and I can further refine a specific course. Suppose I'm only interested in Business 100. Now I can click and I can narrow down my search. So this is another example of a data-driven web page. I have a simple example to show you how you might approach doing something like this. And we are working with the college database and the members table and the cities. Supposing we wanted to see all of the students that live in a particular city. Here I have a drop-down list, please select a city. And it is populated by the cities in our database. Therefore, if another student enrolls in a different city, for example, Temecula, it will automatically be added to this drop-down list the next time we query. And this is the purpose of using a database in a website because it automates the information so that you don't have to be hard coding it and changing it. The website itself will update itself when the database updates. Now supposing we wanted to see the students that live in Chula Vista, I can click and here we see in a table their ID, their first name, their last name, I'm also showing you selected Chula Vista. I'm also showing there are five records. Should I choose another one? Let's go to San Diego. There's probably a lot. I will click, and yeah, there are 12. And here we go. One more time, Del Mar, two students. Let's take a look at how we do this. The first thing we need to do, obviously, is to make our connection to the database. Now, I also have a variable set a true false flag determining when to show the table. In the event that there was an error and something happened and there was no data, we just want to be on the safe side and not show the table unless there is data in it. I have two message placeholders in the body. The placeholder for the error message, if there is no error message, then it will show you the name of the city. And this is the placeholder for telling us how many records. We need to make the connection. I'm using the MySQLI object oriented. And here we have our error checking in the event that our connection fails. Here is our select, our first select statement. 
this is the select statement that's going to populate that drop down list. And what we want to do is we want to populate it with all the cities that are represented. We looked at this capability a couple weeks ago using the distinct keyword. We also could have used group by, group by city. So here we're we only want to show this, the unique names of the cities from the members in the state of California. And we have an order by. Very convenient. Now we're going to execute our SQL query. Here's a test. Always good for a test. And now we're going to post the data. I always like having, my, even though we are posting to itself, I always like having my if in the event that there's a problem here. So in the event that the post didn't go through, we have the request could not be processed. Else, if, if the choice is none, what do we mean by that, if, if the choice is none? Then we give them the message, please make a selection. Let's go back to our form here. And if we look at the source code, we have coded our first, please select our city, to the value of none. So we actually have some validation here. If this is still the selection, then we know they have not made a choice, so we're telling them to go back and make a choice. So here we have, and remember, we have a post back. The data is being sent. So here's our else. Else, if they did make a valid selection, we're going to show the table. Our variable show table equals true. And now here's the message telling what city they selected. This first SQL statement is populating our drop-down list. We now have a second SQL statement that is selecting the data from the table where the city equals whatever city the user has chosen. This is going to populate our table. So there's our second SQL. We're going to execute our second SQL. We we'll also have our message for how many rows are being returned. And that's all we have for the PHP. Now we go down into our body and we are dynamically generating this whole table. Here's one of our placeholders that's going to show us the number of records. Everything else is inside our PHP. Here again, our error checking, we want to make sure we have some rows. Always a good thing to do, you never know. Data could have dropped somehow. So as long as we have rows, number of rows is greater than zero. Here's our form, and we are posting it to itself. We hard-coded in our select, then we hard-coded in our first option. The rest are all being populated by the while loop inside our option tag. We are populating with the values as the from the database. We're ending our select, we are adding a submit, and we are ending our form. So everything was done using PHP. And here's our else in the event that there were no results. So that is the form. That is the populated form that we dynamically generated with our first SQL query. Now here is our table that is generated with our second SQL query. So if our show table flag is true. Now we're going to create the table and populate it with our second SQL statement. So here we have dollar result two. So as long as we have some rows, in the event there was a problem, we're hard coding in in PHP our table headers, and inside our table we have our while loop that's creating our row. We're showing the ID, the first name and the last name that was in our second SQL query. We're ending our row, ending our table and our T body. We have a T body and a T head. In the event there is a problem, there's our error message. And here's our placeholder showing us the city. So here, if we, they don't select the city, we get an error message. We do not show a table. If they do select a valid city, there we show the data. We show how many records. We show the city. And all of this is dynamically created using PHP and MySQL database.